If you are looking to build stronger bones and prevent fractures with osteoporosis, this is the video for you. As a physical therapist, I'm gonna show you the top five most effective exercises to help you not only build stronger bones, but live an active life with osteoporosis. Exercise can be an extremely powerful tool to help you do that. But just like if you were to take a medication, you need the correct dosage, you need the correct dosage and type of exercise in order to make change. First, we're gonna talk about what you need to know and then we're gonna get started. Research has shown you need two things in order to be effective. The first one is high intensity exercise. Intensity essentially refers to the difficulty of a movement. In order to make change to your bones, you have to be completing movements that feel challenging, that feel difficult, and that make your body work hard. This is why certain activities like going for a leisurely walk around the neighborhood or doing a gentle stretching routine might not be bringing you the benefit you think they are. The second is high impact exercise. Impact essentially refers to the stress that's coming through your body. Typically, this can be achieved through activities like jumping, but don't worry, there are other variations if you don't wanna jump or have not jumped in a long time that can elicit this same high impact. One important thing to note is that research has also shown it may take six up to 12 months in order to make true change to bone. Bone can be a little bit slower at strengthening compared to your muscles, so consistency is key. Shooting for two to three times a week of incorporating these two strategies can be a great rule of thumb to start with. Let's get on to the exercises so you know what movements to start with. Exercise number one is called a heel drop. You're going to hold on to a stable surface, a chair, a kitchen counter, Raise up on your toes as high as you can, and then let your heels drop down. This is bringing you impact. The reason I like this exercise is because it's very easily modified. So if you are just getting started on this journey, you can lessen the impact by slowly dropping. You can go on a softer surface, so you're not getting as much stress through those bones at the moment as your body gradually gets used to it. Now you can increase the challenge by raising up higher and then dropping more quickly. Or you can move to a harder surface. The most important thing is that this should not elicit any sort of pain. Trying anywhere from 10 if you're just getting started, upwards to 30 or maybe even 40 a day can be helpful getting started on your journey, but each person's going to be different, so these are just merely suggestions, and you do what's best for your body. Number two is the stomp squat, which is everybody's favorite. Start seated in a chair that you can stand up from. Lift both legs slightly off the ground so you can elicit a stomp as you stand up quickly. Stomp and stand up fast. The beauty of this exercise is it achieves both strategies we talked about in the beginning, high intensity and high impact. You're getting the impact through the stomp. So in order to modify this, you can lessen the strength of the stomp by just doing a smaller stomp first and then increasing the strength of it as you get more comfortable. You're getting the intensity, the higher intensity, from adding speed at which you're standing up that's going to force your muscles to work harder. For most exercises to add intensity, you can either increase the speed at which you're moving or increase the weight that you're using. Adjust the seating height depending on how good you are at chair squats. If you're pretty proficient in them and you don't experience any pain or much difficulty from a regular chair, you can go to a lower surface. Anywhere between 10 to maybe 30 of these accumulating throughout the day can be helpful to start with at first. Remember, we're looking for at least two to three times per week. So this is one you can very easily slip in throughout your day, work on accumulating a certain amount depending on how your body feels. Number three is a cardio exercise that's going to bring some intensity. But what it's also going to do is strengthen the muscles that move you sideways. 
incredibly important because we spend most of our lives moving forwards. Well, there are muscles that move you sideways. Those muscles are primarily parts of your glutes. Your glutes are your butt muscles that help to support your hips. If you have bone weakening in your hips, it's very, very common. So you can imagine the importance of those glute muscles. We're going to take a common exercise of stepping sideways and add some intensity. Again, the intensity is speed or weight you're using. We're going to add speed to this. What I'd like you to do is try a side shuffle. Notice I'm adding a little bit of a hop. Perhaps that will add a little bit of impact. As I go, right now, I'm only going about three or four steps one way, three or four steps the other. You can reduce the speed if you're not quite ready for that by keeping your feet primarily on the floor without that hop, but still adding a degree of speed. You can also go along a kitchen counter if you need some upper body support. Set a timer anywhere from 30 to maybe even 90 seconds and see how many times you can go back and forth. Now you're racing against the clock as well, so that's going to add an extra degree of intensity. Again, we're looking for two to three times a week. I would say trying to accumulate maybe three to five minutes of these side shuffles, but it doesn't all have to be at the same time. Exercise number four is going to work your upper body and your core using a version of a wall push-up. Both upper body and core muscles are extremely important to support your spine, a common place for osteoporosis to occur, and your upper body to help your wrists and forearms. Again, another common place where you can have some bone weakening. All you need is a wall. Stand about an arm's length away. Take about a half step back. So your body is in just the slightest diagonal. From here, lower your forehead to the wall and then press away, allowing your hands to come off the wall. Press away, come back. Press away, come back. This is again achieving both of those strategies, high impact and high intensity. High impact comes from as you press away from the wall and then come back, you have some impact going through your upper body. Secondly, we're adding that intensity by adding the speed. Lower and press away. Lower and press away. As you do this, be careful not to press too hard where you lose your balance backwards. Come down, press away. Come down, press away. But I want you to focus on pressing away with control. Instead of pressing away as hard as you can, you're just getting that control and notice my impact is not hard. You're coming down and then pressing away, but bringing your hands back in a controlled manner instead of just slamming them into the wall. We don't want to cause any wrist pain with this. Trying anywhere from about 10 to 20 at first can be helpful for this one, especially making sure that you don't experience any upper body pain. Exercise number five works your entire body, upper body, core, and lower body, along with bringing you impact and intensity. The exercise is a side stomp, which is going to bring the impact, and an overhead press, which is going to bring the intensity. I want you to make sure you can do this body weight first, and then there are options to add weight to this. If you cannot go overhead, you can punch straight out in front as you stomp out to the side. Again, adjusting the stomp for however you're feeling and where you're at in your fitness journey. Now, if you'd like to add weight, first I want to say make sure that when you bend down to pick something up from the ground that you keep your chest up instead of bending at the spine. Keep your chest up. Notice my spine stays in an aligned position as I pick it up. You can also put weights on a higher surface like a chair that, or a bench. That way you don't have to bend down. If you want to use a weight, you're going to start with it at your shoulder. I'm going to press up as I step out. One thing to watch out for is make sure that you aren't excessively arching your back as you press overhead. That's a very common mistake a lot of people make. 
start with a light weight. Eight to about 12 or 15 on one side, and then you'll switch to the other side. Same exact thing, stomp and press. I commend you for watching this video because that means you are dedicated on this journey to building stronger bones. Now you know what exercises you can start with and how to get the appropriate dosage in order to make a change. If you want to keep this train rolling, I have a 10 minute follow along video here that includes the principles that we just mentioned in a follow along fashion. You can head there right after this. Stay strong on this journey and cheers to adventuring.